Good day, this is Chief. This is the day after Memorial Day. I meant to do this video yesterday so we could remember and, and honor our nation's dead people. I mean, you can't really just say, hey, happy Memorial Day. I mean, because there's really nothing happy about the loss of a loved one in combat. So having said that, I hope you honored Memorial Day. I did my way. I, like I said, I meant to do this video yesterday, but I got tied up doing this and doing that. I had some repairs that could not wait. A fence and a uh, water valve. But a little bit of show and tell today and something that's really hilarious. As I said last week, I befriended the three lieutenants, the Japanese lieutenants at the exercise. And then on my way out of our final dinner, uh, I got... Like I said, they were there with the entourage and they ran up to me, I think, and they stopped me and spun me around. And then there was a colonel who, of course, had a gift for me. Of course, this was wrapped in paper. And as I said, when the Japanese give you a gift, you must open it. They don't have to open yours. Well, at this time, I had nothing to give back. Uh, the things that I brought over were that we were told to bring like souvenir items, something you know, that mentioned a place, you know, something that you would buy at a famous site. Snickers is arriving. So, come on. It's got to ride, be in my lap. Snickers is in my lap. Be quiet. Uh, so I open this up and then, of course, I pull out these rice, rice balls. These are filled with rice, little sacks of rice. And they're all different shapes and sizes. Not, not that bad, but... There's five of them in here, so I can learn how to juggle. Chief, don't juggle. Uh, a couple of my fellow students back at my second a AIT, they became jugglers, and they would sit there and juggle in the classroom on breaks and stuff like that. Now, what is kind of funny is, you know, here I got inexpensive gifts to, to take over there, and I ran out right away because... I think the three lieutenants, rather than them giving me one collective gift, I think they gave me, each gave me a gift. So there was three of my items. I didn't bring that many because we were told, just bring a handful. You know, it's not like you had to give every Japanese soldier you ran across a gift. Now, here's something funny. I mean, here's one side of the label. I don't know if it's focusing on that. And then here's the other side. Probably can't read it, but at the very bottom of this, and I just read this today for, I don't know how many years sitting elsewhere, it says made in China. Now I'm kind of thinking, is this a cheap gift from Japan that was made in China? It doesn't devalue the memory of the gift. I mean, I got five rice balls, so one of these days if I get super bored and as long as I keep my uh, dexterity, I can learn how to juggle. Uh, also went on my desk. I don't know why I have these always on my desk, but we also brought over uh, DUIs, distinguished unit insignias, rank, little flags, patches, and traded those. I didn't bring over that much again. Got a Japanese sew-on flag. I have paratrooper wings. And I have a engineer symbol. To me, it looks like a the steering wheel on a ship. As you're gonna focus, doesn't look like you're gonna focus. And then I got a another Japanese flag that you like wear on a lapel because it's got a screw with a back. It doesn't have the dammit, and they have actually have better dammits now. Dammits. Anybody that's been in the military, you know what a dammit is. Is what's hold these the pins but these are the ones that lock we get ones that are simple and you're you're always losing one that's why they're called dammits and then last but not least i guess it was the name of the exercise asaka 99 i know you probably can't even begin to see that i don't know if it's going to focus on it or me uh but a pin from the exercise so that was my some of my gifts, a lot of the gifts I think I got, I gave away to my mother because she was always big on the Oriental, Orient, or however you pronounce it. So I probably gave her the greater share of my gifts and what happened to them when she died, I don't know. 
I might have a few in my war chest. This I did not find in my war chest. I found this while I was doing some of the chores around my house yesterday. It just happened to be in the bath, my master bathroom. And now I want to talk a little bit about another exercise. I don't know how far I'm going to get into it, but like I said, go to for I core, first core. That's the same first core that is mentioned in the TV series MASH. And our mission is to go to Korea. However, the calculations, I don't know if they're classified or not. I was told in an open source, they estimated that it would take 90 days back in 98, 99 when I was there, 90 days to get to South Korea. And most of the conclusions were, but by the time that I Corps would arrive to take charge of the divisions that would be assigned to it, the war would basically be over with. I don't know why we were so slow, slow getting over there after attending all the classes of how fast we can move equipment. And like I said, I was the safety officer, I was the unit movement officer, and after finding out how fast we can move stuff over or onto the ships to ship it overseas, 90 days, whatever. Uh, I ended up going to Thailand to a Cobra Gold. Now, if anybody's ever heard about Cobra Gold, you know that that is a annual exercise and mostly what you see is our infantry units integrating in with their infantry units and you'll see them trying to tame the Cobra Snake. I mean, that's all the images that I saw was that. Well, being military intelligence, oh, no, 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 no. I don't get to see all that. We go to a major city up in the northern half of the country and we're put in hotels. Uh, there weren't enough officers so I somehow got selected to have a room with an enlisted member. Didn't bother me, didn't bother him, we basically kept out of each other's way and uh, but we also had one of those bars across the street from the hotel where we were told don't go there you don't know what you might pick up and I mean by picking up person wise uh, we had a lot of what I would mention as veterans people that had already been to Thailand so they knew the ins and outs of what not to do because one night we decided that we would go to a Thai restaurant and we piled into their motorized rickshaws. I don't know what else to call them. So you got five, six people crammed into, and we're talking Americans. So they probably could normally put probably about eight people where we put five or six Americans due to our size. Uh, <clears throat> drove to this restaurant, had a nice, nice meal, and a bunch of us decided that we would walk back to see what we could see at night. Now one guy who was a veteran said, we're gonna walk down the middle of the street or on the sidewalk, don't look left, don't look right, and if you get called out, just keep on walking. You don't want to be stopped because if you get stopped, they're gonna come up and grab your arms and say, you know, you want me short time, long time type deal. I mean, I'm a little racial bias there and you'll get your pocket picked, more or less, at that same time. So don't stop, don't let them grab you. And if, if you see somebody get grabbed, everybody go over and ungrab him. So he took us through a few areas where there was the so-called red light district. Because he also said, once again, you may not know who is grabbing you, male or female. So we walked back, we had an enjoyable time. I mean, it was a nice evening. Uh, the only trouble was is that there was a lot of fish. Yes, we were near a river, but we're talking ocean fish at the same time too. So that means they were either, sh well, they were shipped, but how they were shipped, I don't know, because you would see uh, people, men, men mostly, riding on bicycles and wrapped around their handlebars is these big old, the big old clear, heavy, thick uh, plastic bags full of fish. And they're not live, so you don't know how old those things are. Plus, they eat a lot of bugs. I didn't try any bugs. I didn't want to try bugs. Uh, occasionally, you would get a reasonable merchant 
I mean, because some people were there to buy a, whatever they could find. Me, personally, I went there for the exercise. Fell in love with uh, chicken fried rice because I noticed that the further, further our, or the cl closer I got to India, the more stronger the curry was, which I don't mind. So the strongest curry that I had was in, of course, Thailand, and then I ended up, because we were in Japan, we had chicken fried rice, yeah. Uh, when I was in South Korea, of course, I had chicken fried rice and all other kinds of things, but we'll talk about Korea when I get there. But I also noticed that the best chicken fried rice that I had was in Thailand during the exercise, because we had the equivalent of a gut truck right outside our door. I mean, this guy came in, he had a contraption that he picked up and moved and it was cooking it and he stirred it up in the pan and it was the best, it was the best. You got it fresh. Uh, the one thing <laughs> that's gonna make this not kid friendly is, is that a lot of people got sick. We were told don't buy salads because First off, you don't know what's all in the salad because their vegetables or some of their vegetables or some of their ingredients you'd never seen before because my roommate who was enlisted, he ordered a couple pizzas from the Pizza Hut and a salad and his salad looked alien to me. It looked like something from a movie. That's how, how unrecognizable the ingredients were to me because we were told their sanitary conditions aren't American standards, so therefore, yeah, they might have washed that lettuce, but they might have washed that letter, lettuce in substandard water. But a lot of people got sick, and they were earning money because doctors wanted to study what was making our soldiers sick. So you, if you got sick, you'd go see the doctor. He gives you a plas uh, Ziploc pl plastic bag. And you put your deposit from your bowels into said plastic bag. And then when you returned it, you earned $50 because it wasn't just the Army doing this research. It was also private enterprise. So therefore, they were paying us soldiers who got sick. I didn't get sick. And I'm generally the one that's got the queasy stomach. I did not get sick. Of course, I didn't order that strange-looking salad from Pizza Hut either. Uh, Thailand was short, fast, and furious, just like anything else. We got there, we set up. Uh, there was no really partying, like in Japan. I noticed that there was no get-togethers between the staffs. So we did our exercise, we cleaned up, and then we heard a rumor. They scheduled the flight to get us there, 22 hours on a plane, but they had forgotten to schedule the flight out. So we may sit at the airport for a couple days waiting on planes. Well, that turned out to be not really true. They did have a plane for us and 22 hours flying back home. Long as I ever sat on an airplane. Good thing it wasn't full because we had a, I don't know what size it was, but we had a pretty good size bird, as they call them, to get back home to Fort Lewis. So, so that's it. Show and tell for Japan, my experience going to Thailand, didn't see anything because we didn't get much downtime. We got there, we, like I said, we got there, we set up, we did the exercise, we came home. I came, I saw, I conquered, I went home. Chief out, remember, freedom's not free. Hope you're still doing your thoughts for Ukraines. So, Chief out, freedom's not free.